This is the first of a series of talks that I'm going to give about the Aquarium Magician Stack. For this first lecture, we will look at the, the base layout of the Aquarium Magician's Deck, which is called the Mystical Map. It's called that because the positions map out processes of creation and destruction that run through everything. We can narrow that down in magic to look at magical work and the magician and processes that are happening around the magician. Before we get into understanding what the positions mean and, and looking in depth at them, the first thing I want to do is look at the patterns, look at the groupings. They're very specific in this layout. As you look at the picture, you'll notice that the first thing that runs through the reading, through the layout, is a line from top to bottom. This starts with the first impulse of creation and ends with the last gathering of destruction and composting and putting to sleep. So you have the Star Father at the top, which is the first creative impulse, the divine impulse that utters out of the void, that brings into being the future. That's constantly happening. Creation is constantly going, as is destruction. Down at the bottom of that is the abyss. What is uttered out of the void, what comes into being from the Star Father, is eventually composted and put to sleep in the abyss. So the abyss is the distant past or things that have been bound away that will never come back. In the Star Father, when we're looking at it in terms of a reading, we're looking at what is currently being formed that will then blossom in the far future. Beneath that is the grindstone. The grindstone for a magician and in a magical reading is very much about um, hard work, struggles, difficulties, things that must be overcome in order for creation to come through. It's like the birth of something. Um, but it's not the beginning of the birth, it's the labour process. It's the working hard, the being pushed down, but having to push against a stone to move it. And it's something, whatever falls in this position, is something that cannot be avoided if you want to continue into the future on the path that you're on. So it's very much about work. And it's the training of the magician, it's the polishing and grinding of the magician, and also the building of the temple, it's the hard work that goes into it. Beneath the grindstone is Mother Earth. That's the ground zero for today, the present, the here, the building, the person, the body whatever it is that you're looking at. The earth is the expression that's finalised and expressed itself out in the physical world that originally started with the Star Father. Below that is the unraveller. Once something has reached its peak in creation, it then begins the slow unravelling until it's composted and put to sleep in the abyss. The unraveller is about things beginning to fall apart, beginning to decay, um, not really having a place anymore, but is still going through a process. Just as the grindstone puts you through a process of creation, so the un unraveller is a process towards destruction. So that's the first line down the middle, and crossing Mother Earth is a union. This is about relationships, and not just between uh, two lovers. Um, union is very much about agreement coming together, your interrelations with something or someone. So it could be anything from how you interrelate with the world around you, how you relate to the magicians that work with you, what your relationship is like with them. And it can also indicate something that has a relationship with you that you might not be aware of, um, an angelic being, an inner contact. It's about something that passes between the two people. Or if the Mother Earth is about a building, it's the relationship of the people to that building. So that's the first line down the middle. Then there's another line coming across to form an equal armed cross. On one side to the left, we have the gate of the past. That is where everything that's in the unraveller is going towards. It's going towards the door of the past. Everything that's going to the future is on the opposite side with the path of Hercules. Everything that's coming from the Star Father and that's working through this reading is expressing itself in the future in the path of Hercules. So that's your main cross, in, out, 
past, future. Now we start to look at the X that runs through the reading. Up on the top left hand side we have the Temple of Ancestors. This is a position on a card that talks about where ancestral knowledge, be it your own blood ancestors, ancestors in the land where you live, um, past adepts that are connected to a magical line or past priests or priestesses that are connected to a religion. This is where they interface with you. This is their temple. This is their exteriorization in our world, our magic and our lives. Below that is the weaver of creation. This is a root power that weaves everything that comes out of the Star Father. When we were looking at this card and thinking about the layout, we, we swayed back and forth between putting the wheel here, between putting the fates here, and we thought it better because in magic you can reach into the depths of the inner worlds to create. It would be better to use the weaver of creation because it can stand for that very, very deep inner weaving of power right down to a fate being played out or, or woven in your life or in the work that you're doing. So it allows you, you can interpret it in, in lots of different directions. The Temple of Ancestors and the Weaver of Creation are very closely linked. When you're going through a fate pattern, which is what the Weaver of Creation is about in the layout, it's, it's what fate are you currently in? What's the pattern that you're playing out? That's very often deeply connected with ancestral contacts or past contacts. Past bears a great influence on the present and on the future. And the same goes for inner contacts. So you're looking at, with these two cards, something that's a, f a pattern of fate, and in the background behind that are the contacts of adepts, of blood ancestors, of, of beings from the land that all flow, flow through. And whatever lands in that position of, of the Temple of Ancestors is something that is directly trying to connect with you or is connecting with you. So it's like the shop front for, for old contacts. If we follow that line through, we go through the Mother Earth and we get to Home and Hearth. Home and Hearth is literally Home and Hearth. It's about your everyday life, about your home, your family, what nurtures you, um, what's in your house. And it can also apply to um, the regenerative organs. So the ovaries, the testes, it's what brings the family into being and then what nurtures and protects it. And below that is the blood ancestor. This is very deep in the underworld. It's your distant blood and it's literally your blood ancestor rather than the land or adepts or anything else. It's what flows through your blood that comes from lines that were there hundreds of years before you. It could be only a couple of generations, but usually it's, it's going right back. What is flowing out of that deep underworld connection with your ancestors through your home, through your family, through your bloodline that then weaves you into a pattern of fate and the temple of ancestors and the blood ancestor can work together in a reading. The voices that connect with you from the temple of the ancestors often come from this deep blood ancestor down in the underworld and if they're not of your blood, how your blood ancestors were define how you will react in your fate pattern to those connections that come through the Temple of Ancestors. So it's very much about what, what skills do you have in your blood, what knowledge, what memories flow through your blood and how does that affect you. Looking at the other arm of the X, at the top, in the top right hand side, we have the Inner Temple. This is the deepest interface for humans with the inner worlds and with magic. This represents a series of constructs in the inner world that were put together by humans over time and act as an interface between angelic beings, deities, contacts, adepts, priests, priestesses and the humans. And, and this all goes on in the inner worlds. So this is what's when you go into the inner world and you or you're working magic, what's, what's, what's behind it? Um, and what is behind it comes through the inner temple position. Um, that's about the inner worlds. It's the whole construct of the inner worlds as we relate to it as living humans. 
Below that is the Magical Temple. That's, again, the shop front for the inner temple for us as living magicians. Um, these are more immediate constructs and can be literally physical constructs like a, a magical lodge or a building. But often it refers to um, magical systems and magical lines that you work within. So, for example, if you're a Golden Dawn magician, the magical temple in the layout, if beings or contacts from the Golden Dawn were trying to talk to you, they would talk to you through the position of the magical temple. It's the consecrated lines, it's the lines of priesthoods, it's the lines of initiated adepts. We pass back down through, through the X, through the Mother Earth, everything connects into the physical substance. Beyond that, we come to the River of Dreams. The River of Dreams is very much about our dream life, our visionary life, um, and our deeper instincts. The River of Dreams, um, from a visionary magical perspective, is a river that flows out of the underworld. It's, it's one of the root sources of the rivers of the underworld. Um, it's not the river of death. It runs parallel to the river of death, but it comes from the same source in the underworld. And like all water, it holds ancestral information and knowledge. Um, in this position in the layout, we're talking about dreams, visions. What's coming up out the underworld depths to talk to us? And often the Temple of Ancestors will talk to us in dreams. So you can read the Temple of Ancestors and the River of Dreams together. If you look beyond the River of Dreams, you get to Foundation, which is a stone. This is a stone at the centre of all things. Um, for quarry magicians, you will be working with this or you will have worked with this um, in vision uh, and in ritual. It's the anchor of all humanity and of everything that lives. It's everything that is held in the, in the land and where the abyss is the inner storage unit of the, of the universe where things are put to sleep, the foundation stone is like the outer version of the abyss. When something dies, it decays. What doesn't decay becomes locked into the earth and turned into stone. And th that is magically our anchor, our magical stone um, that shields us, that protects us. And it's also the route that we all go back to. So when you think of things that flow out of the Star Father, their very, very, very last thing is to become a stone. There's a lot of mystical magic behind that. And the foundation stone anchors everything down in the underworld that then flows up and communicates um, with the surface world. So from foundation, it's linked to the Temple of Ancestors, it's linked to the Grindstone, it's linked to the Weaver of Creation. It's an opposite of the Magical Temple and Inner Temple. And it's also the anchor of the, of the Blood Ancestor. So you'll see there's a lot of ancestral stuff in this layout, and that's very specific and for a very good reason. We are, the sh we are what we stand upon the shoulders that we stand upon, the ancestral shoulders and the earth that we stand upon is our foundation that we launch ourselves from. And it's the vessel that we flow into. So looking at these different um, magical aspects, these different orbits, you see the magical temple, the inner temple and the path of Hercules all clustered together. For a magician, the path of Hercules, your future path that you will walk as an adept magician flows from the guidance that comes from the magical temple and the inner temple. On the opposite side, the gate of the past is in an orbit and you have the temple of ancestors, you have the river of dreams, the foundation and the weaver. Out of the past is weave the future. And what we did in the past and who we were in the past has a massive bearing on what we will do and who we will be in the future. So let's have a look at the layout in terms of a, of a magical reading. And, and let's assume, say, we were reading about um, a magical system. Whatever lands in the Mother Earth, the first card tells you that's the system. Then union is placed across it. Whatever falls in union is the relation with that system. So it's the people who are involved with that system. Then we look at the staff, what's in the staff father. 
That is what's the long-term future of this, of this system, if it carries on in the way that it is. It's what's coming out of the void to form the future of that system. Then we look down in the abyss. What has been locked away that enables that system to survive and to live today? Then we look in the past. What happened in the past that gave light to the present? What was birthed in the past that now allows that system to live and survive? So the abyss and the gate of the past will be read together. The abyss is the very deepest roots that will never come back. The gate of the past is a revolving door. It's what comes in and out from the past, the past learning, the past context. Then we look at the the Temple of Ancestors, um, these are the, would be the adepts that have been before in that system, would show there, this would be their voices. Um, what would be in the inner temple would show all the angelic beings, the magical patterns, the inner constructs um, that the magical system can then flow from. So whatever's in the inner temple is not specific to that system. It's, it's the wider magic behind that, the wider inner stuff behind that that allows um, the system to come into fruit. Then we'll look at the blood ancestor. Again, those are all the the people who went before who brought this system into being. Now, that might not necessarily mean the founders of the system. It could be their distant blood ancestors, that whatever happened to them and what they went through brought about um, the physical, mental, uh, psychic and inner ability for the founders to found a system. Then we'll look in foundation. Whatever's in foundation is the anchor for a magical system. So, you know, you would be looking at, is there an elemental foundation? Is there an angelic foundation? Is there a priesthood foundation? Whatever it is, that is the rock that holds it all together. And if you get a fragmented or difficult card there, then you know that its very root foundations are on very, very um, troublesome ground. It's, it's not a good sign. Then we have the Weaver of Creation. This is what is the system doing now in the present at this time. That could be this day, this week, this year, this decade. Um, it depends on how long the fate pattern is that the system is within. The grindstone would show what does the system have to deal with and survive and overcome and, um, I don't want to say conquer, but more um, survive uh, and flourish be in, despite um, whatever it is that falls in the grindstone. The, the magical system, any problems that it's going to have to overcome will, will, will land there. The magical temple itself will show the magical inner structure of the system. So be it an angelic structure, um, a power pattern, a deity pattern, whatever it is, and, and its health and what flows through that pattern will show in the position of the magical temple. The home and hearth shows you the everyday life of the people involved in that system. So it will show you the health or not of the interactions between the magicians in a system. Um, it can also show you the um, the day-to-day -day workings of the temple itself if it has a defined building um, as to the health of that building and how the people interact with it. Uh, then we get to the unraveller. What is being unravelled and taken away from that system? Or what is causing an unravelling situation? Um, if it was an unravelling that was current, um, it would more likely show in the grindstone, but you would read the grindstone and the unraveller together. Um, usually it's what is being taken apart in that system. Um, so it could be a leader, it could be a building, it could be a way of doing things, it will show in the unraveller. The river of dreams will show the visionary work, all the dreams um, and psychic ability of that system and the people within that system. And any communication that is attempting to get through via dreams and visions will show in that position. The path of Hercules, that will show the short-term future of the system, where is it going within the fate pattern that it's in now. Um, and then the star father you go back to and look 
which shows you the long-term future that will come out of the Path of Hercules. So if the Star Father and the Path of Hercules are not good cards, then you have to go back and you have to look. Look in the ancestral temple, look in the magical temple, look at the weaver, look at the foundation, look at the unraveler, the river of dreams, and look at what's in union, see what's going wrong. And then, then you can do readings to look and change. So if, if you see a very bad pattern in the future, but it looks okay now, obviously there's something you're not seeing. So you need to look and do a, a yes-no reading um, and say, okay, what is the actual problem that's going to bring this in the future? If it still shows no problem, it means that the long-term future of that system is dead. It's not going to have a future. Maybe because the people, you know, over time people scatter, things fall apart. Everything has its own sell-by date. So, so that's the overall layout um, and the mystical map layout. You can also use this to look at yourself as a magician or as a priest or priestess and look at your overall life pattern. So the question you would ask would be, show me the, the, the whole picture of this life, the overall pattern of this life, um, and you would read it accordingly. Um, whatever is shown within it is overall patterns. It's not the little niggly fate, shall I go this way, shall I go that way? Um, it's the overall imprint of the pattern that you came in with and and where you will go in the long-term future with that. As a soul perspective, what appears in the Star Father will tell you, you know, this is this is where you're going in, in terms of your soul, your spirit within this life. Um, and then you can look at the overall reading to see, you know, what, what powers are bringing that into being? What is the bigger picture that's flowing through your life? What is the bigger purpose that's flowing through your life? So I hope that was a little bit helpful. Um, I think rather than do um, very sort of strict and organised lectures, talking around it this way might annoy some people who want everything in a row, but it allows for going round and round the patterns and looking at the, the, the deeper insights that can come up. So for the next lecture, we will have a look at the mystical map layout in action. Thanks for listening. <laughs>